Hello Fiber friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm Sarah, I'm the owner of Denim and Rain. I'm an artist, I make cool little resin stitch markers, all the things. Uh, you can find all the links to all the things down below, including my Ko-Fi, in case you want to buy me a cup of tea to say thank you. Today I have a projects video for you. I'm going to show you all of the knit and crochet things I've been working on. Then at the end of the video, I will have a little bit of add many things to talk about as far as my youtube channel goes um what you can expect in the future also if you're into my lifestyle vlogs definitely make sure you stay to the end because i've got some info on that but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into all the things i've been working on first off happy new year so exciting we're in 2024 uh thank goodness 2023 is over it was not a fun year but we're moving on and looking forward to new things. So to kick us off, uh, I thought I would touch on the topic of what I knit in 2023. Now, last year I did the 20, what I knit in 2022. It was a lot of fun to make, but for some reason this year, like seeing everybody's videos, I got like super stressed out and was like, ah, I'm like, everybody's already put out their videos and I haven't even touched it. And then I was like, got this feeling of, well, I don't want to do it then. Cause I was getting so stressed out and freaked out that I hadn't done it yet. And everybody else had already put theirs out. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. First off, I don't need to make one of those videos. Second off, if I want to make one of those videos, I can make it whenever the heck I want. Um, so I'm not pressuring myself or stressing myself out about a video like that. If I feel the desire to do it, I will do it uh, later on down the road. But right now, I am not. Uh, but I will show you my knitting notebook and kind of give you a brief overview of what I knit in 2023. So this is just a plain notebook that has like the grid paper, not that you can see because it's blown out, but that's okay. You get, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so what I have in here is a list of my makes. I put like what the project is, what yarn I use and, uh, what size I knit, who it was for when I started, when I finished and how I felt about it after I had finished. So I have these two pages and whoop, hold on and part of this page filled. So what I ended up finishing in 2023 was six sweaters, seven summer items. So like tank tops, t-shirts, that type of thing, eight hats, six socks, six home items. So like dishcloths, blankets, etc. One pair of fingerless mittens and 10 gifts. Now a couple of these things overlapping, um, like the gifts and the hats and socks. Those are overlapped a little bit. So I ended up with a grand total of 36 finished projects. I frogged four projects and gifted 10. Uh, so last year I did do quite a bit more by like 10. I, I think, yeah, 10 projects more, 11 projects more. Last year I finished 47 total things. I knit nine sweaters, three summer things, four hats, 14, 14 pairs of socks. Holy crap. That was a lot of socks. I thought I had knit way less socks this year. Yeah. Six socks this year. And three of those pairs were for children, six home items, four baby sweaters, three mittens and 19 gifted items. It's quite a bit. That's a lot of gifted items. Holy cow. Okay. Well, cool. I did a lot of knitting last year not well the year before <laughs> forgetting we're in 2024 now uh the year before i did quite a bit more knitting this last year i didn't do as much and i kind of knew throughout the year that i wasn't knitting as much it's not a competition year to year so it doesn't really matter that i knit less this year uh but it's cool to reflect on and see where life was and what i was doing last this last year had a lot of stress and things and a lot of sitting without doing anything where normally if I sit, I'm knitting, but this last year that didn't happen so much, but that's okay. Uh, so I've already started 2024 list. So I changed it up a little bit. I have my projects, um, the yarn, I added size and then modifications um, to it. So, so far on here, I always have a list for my like things that I make multiples of every year, like dishcloths, and then I'll keep a tally of how many I've made rather than putting 
a row for every single dishcloth I make because that would just fill up real quick. Um, and then I have one for granny squares in case I start a granny square project, which I do have one kind of going-ish. So if I add more granny squares, I can keep a tally of how many granny squares. I don't usually add each individual granny square to my end of year total. I usually count it as one all together. And then I have one that I started this year for face, 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 washcloths. I don't know why that word was so difficult. So I've added those things into here. Give you one more little look at what it looks like here. Don't mind me missy. Handwriting is just kind of jot the things down. All right, so let's go ahead and show you some of the things I've been working on, right? Cause that's why you're here. And then at the end, I do have some more fun organizational things to show you. I love, I love fresh organizational things. But anyways, uh, let's start with what I have finished. Mm, hold on. Okay, I have some socks that I knit for my children for Christmas, but they didn't get them for Christmas because they're still technic, they're, they're done, but they're technically not done because I haven't woven in the ends. But I decided to wait to have the kids try them on to make sure they fit them uh, before, you know, I did all the finishings. Uh, so first up, we have my son Lincoln's pair of socks. He is my youngest. These are just worsted weight lion brand woolies. I sort of followed the pattern from Tin Can Knits. I want to say they're the rye socks. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but they're their free worsted weight sock pattern. So I use that to gauge the kids's feet size. I uh, yeah, they these ones fit Lincoln, so that's great. And then I have Ben's pair. So this is gonna look weird. Um, if you follow my vlogmas, you'll know why. Uh, if you don't, I will explain why. Uh, so here's my son's pair. He's my middle kiddo. So this one is a stump sock because he is an amputee and he has um, he has a sign amputation so he still has the heel of his left foot or yeah he has the heel of his left foot but no front part of his foot. He doesn't from here on he has no foot. So he can walk around on his heel but uh, yeah, he doesn't have like regular socks for it. So a few years ago, I knit him a stump sock and he has since grown out of it. And he asked me, he's like, hey mom, could I get a new one? So I was like, of course. So I knit him a special pair of little socks. And then hmm, the tale of woe. <sighs> My daughter who is nine is at that phase of growing where her feet are ginormous and she's still tiny. It's like a puppy, you know, where like puppies get like the, they've got big giant paws, but they're still so teeny. Uh, yeah, that's my daughter. Um, so I knit her a sock. I didn't get her as finish in time, but I was like, that's okay. I will see how it fits before I knit the second one. And I'm glad it did because yeah, <laughs> yeah. So here it is. I'm very excited about it. Uh, it looks very pretty. I am knitting kind of a variation of my Hawkins socks. I just changed up the striping and then altered it to be a kid's size, but I'm just gonna, I think, full blown knit the, I think I'm gonna knit the second women's size for her because I did the cast on of the first women's size and then of course shortened everything, but I think I should just go full blown women's sock size. So it's fine. I will be frogging that and starting over again, but I'm not in a huge hurry. Uh, and then also I have my, I'm kind of not really showing you just finished things, am I? Um, <clears throat> we'll get back to finished things in a second, but in this bag that I have the socks in, I have my moose head that nothing has happened to since the last time I showed it, but that's fine. Eventually I'll knit him, but I'm not in an enormous hurry to do that. Oh, I forgot to mention what I'm wearing. Uh, we can talk about this for a second. Uh, I am wearing my Simba sweater. It's not actually a sweater pattern of any kind. It's just a raglan sweater that I kind of whipped up using loops and threads cozy wool tweed, which is an acrylic blend. It has a whole, I think 3% wool in it. 
it's kind of annoying that they can put the dang it title wool in there and not have any wool, which I mean, I knew going into it, so it's not like I was duped or anything, but uh, yeah, so I am wearing that. I finished it last year, kind of beginning of the year, and then the sleeves are too short, so it kind of sat, and then it sat, and then I altered one of the sleeves, and then it sat, and then it sat, and then this last week I decided I should fix that sweater. So New Year's Day I finished fixing this sweater and I cannot wear it, and I'm very happy about it. It is very cozy uh, and comfy, and I'm very happy with it. Next finished item is a washcloth. Ooh, so exciting. Uh, it is a little smaller than I normally knit my washcloths, and part of that is because I used the wrong needle size. I knit to the stitch count that I normally would, but uh, yeah, the fabric is much more dense than I normally like my dishcloths. I kind of like to knit them a little bit looser because the cotton tends to shrink up and loosen up and shrink up. So yeah, it's pretty small, but whatever, it will still function just fine. So I finished a dishcloth and then I finished a big stack of face, 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 see I did that again, face cloth. So I work running, like I swear, all of my regular washcloths for washing our faces have like disappeared. Don't know where they've gone. So I decided to just crochet up a bunch out of some soft cottons that I have. Uh, especially because now my daughter is like needing to like wash her face and I'm like, we're going to end up going through the washcloths like crazy. So I've got a variation of different styles here. I've got, I've got a bunch of plain circles, a very sad attempt at a corner to corner crochet, a little granny square, a mini uh, dishcloth, <laughs> a sad attempt at a heart. And then I tried something new. I tried Tunisian crochet for the first time and oh my goodness was that fun. So this is Tunisian simple stitch that I did in just a little square just for my first ever attempt at Tunisian crochet. And thank you very much to Tony of TL Yarn Crafts. She has a lot of really amazing video tutorials. It was a breeze to learn from her. Uh, and then I did the corner to corner Tunisian crochet simple, simple stitch. And it looks fabulous. I love it so very much. It almost feels like a woven fabric to me, the Tunisian crochet. I, I don't know, I really like it. It's really cool. And I want to make more home things with this. Uh, she has, I think, a pillow pattern and a few other things that I really want to make now because this was fun. Okay, I'm back. I had to get something out of the oven and then also put my hair up because it was driving me crazy. A little bit of sensory overload for a moment there. So anyways, uh, the last finished thing I have is a pair of socks. I finished my Christmas socks and oh my goodness are they oh so freaking fabulous. This yarn is from Pacific Northwest Pearls and it is a fabulous self-striping yarn. And then for the heels, toes, and cuff, I used uh, Patton's Croy in red. So this is the retro Christmas or vintage Christmas. I can't remember exactly, but I love these socks. These are probably my best fitting socks I've ever made. Uh, they've been worn quite a few times. They are clean. I did just wash them. Uh, th but yeah, they are my best fitting socks so far. And the reason for that is as well, I made big enough socks. <laughs> I have this issue where I cast on too few stitches, make the foot too short, and then I end up with a sock that's too small, and then I end up gifting them to somebody else because they don't fit properly. Um, yeah, so I did a 72 stitch count this time, and I knit the proper foot length, which is 10 inches for my feet. It's really big, I feel like, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, I also need to get larger sock blockers uh, because like, yeah, they don't fit on these sock blockers. They're just too big. They fit my feet. Amazing. And now I want to knit more socks in proper size for my feet because yeah, I even was wearing a pair of socks yesterday that they're too small. Like 
I ha the fabric stretches out way too much and I was noticing I'm starting to wear through them already and it's only been about a year and I don't wear them that much and to be fair though the toe is knit out of non superwash or no it's superwash no nylon yarn so to be fair it is going to wear faster but when you wear socks that are ill-fitting whether it's too large or too small chances are they're going to wear out faster because it's not like getting the proper like like the friction is going to be different on them. So like socks that are too tight, you're really stressing those stitches. So chances are gonna wear out faster. And while larger ones, I feel like it just end up being rough on them, pulling at them and just fabric slopping everywhere. Nobody wants loose, big giant socks anyway. So uh, yeah, I'm a little sad at the fact that, you know, I have to knit larger socks, but I am very happy that they fit. So yeah, I just need to be better about that. And along that vein, I have my A, not both of them, but I have a nest sock to show you. And I've realized that I, I want to knit another pair because these ones, they're a bit small. They're not like super small, but they are smaller than what I want them, especially being as they're supposed to be a nice slouchy, comfy sock. They are slouchy, but they're not, it's not quite long enough, I feel like, to get the full effect. And the foot is a hair short. It really needs probably another quarter to a half an inch of length on it. But this is a pattern by Songbird Handmade. She is actually doing a knit along for them right now. Just don't, I just, I can't. I'm not adding another project into what I've got going on right now. Um, otherwise I would join because I do plan on making another pair of these but bigger. I may save these for Claire or have them or try them on now. They may even fit her feet now uh, with a little bit of room or give them to my sister-in-law because she has smaller feet and she loves socks. Uh, and I feel like these are right up her alley. So I will first see if they fit Claire and if they don't fit her, then I will give them to my sister-in-law because I don't want to ruin them immediately by stretching out the stitches and whatnot. Um, but I knit these out of Lion Brand Wool Ease in the color Arrowroot or Arrowwood, something like that. Okay, let's move on to all the things I am working on. First thing is my sister's sweater. So I did, I, I did not finish it in time for our Christmas and that's okay. A sweater in a month for me right now and the not having as much of like knitting energy as I normally would, uh, it's okay. And I'm giving myself lots of grace. But I am knitting her the Home Sweater V-neck by Kadri out of Lion Brand Wool Ease. I know, lots of Lion Brand Wool Ease. Uh, but I am about three quarters of the way done with the sleeve. I need just maybe this much more and then the cuff. So I'm currently doing a bit of rapid decreasing. You can kind of see from where, like here on, I've been doing some pretty consistent decreases because she doesn't want the sleeve quite as wide as the pattern is. So yeah, and I'm liking the way it's working up. I will be happier when it's blocked and everything's just kind of chilled out a little bit. Feels a little like stiff at the moment. On here I have one of my stitch markers, the resin one which is up top, and then this little sable and stone stitch marker as well. They look so cute on there. For this I am knitting the second size. I've been trying it on and it is fitting me good. I did forget to have her try it on when I gifted it to her. I was gonna have her try it on so I could see how it was working. Um, she has the same like body circumference I feel like I do but she has a much longer torso than I do and she's just taller in general so I next time I see her I'm gonna have her try it on just to make sure everything is working out all right here it is again lion brown woolies I know I know I know get over it I like it and it's affordable and it's really nice nice yarn so uh, I am knitting the Solo Scarf by Kadri, and yes, another Kadri pattern. <laughs> I like these two things, people. So, I am knitting the Solo Scarf, however, I am modifying it. 
Are you surprised? I would hope you're not surprised because I like to modify patterns. So what I did is I, I wanted the long scarf because I have a coat that I like to wear a scarf with, but I only have one scarf at the moment. Uh, that's nice and long. So I wanted to knit this, but I don't, I don't like points on scarves and this has a nice subtle point to it, but it's still a point. So what I did was I knit the increases until I hit the width that I wanted and then I stopped increasing and I've just been knitting straight. And then once I get to about the length I want, then I'll start decreasing down. So that's the modification I've made. It's not a major modification, just didn't want the point. Everything else is to pattern. I am using worsted weight yarn and four and a half millimeter needles. It is working out beautifully. I'm really liking it and I cannot wait to wear it. This is the color from Lion Brown Woolies um, Umber. On here I have a little paint palette marker from Simply Sarah and then a little cloud from Hello Lavender. This was not really a planned cast on. This was a Christmas cast on and I already had the pattern. Uh, Sabina kindly gifted this after testing a pattern for her, which is really awesome. So yeah, I'm working on that. And then, well, should we move on to another catering pattern or should we move on to some socks? Let's save the socks for last. Let me show you the other catering pattern I'm knitting. Uh, they're just simple and easy and I really like them. And if I already have a pattern, why not? Uh, so this is the match cardigan, which I have already knit one of. Bing. It's really nice. It's comfy. It's chunky. I don't really like chunky knits so much in like a pullover. I just get, um, I run cold. But when I get warm, I get very overwhelmed and stressed and start to have like a panic if I am warm for too long and can't like control that temperature. So I feel like with a bulky pullover, there's less control where with a cardigan, I can at least unbutton it. And then if not, I can easily slip it off and we're all good. Uh, we're usually a pullover. You're either not wearing something underneath it or just like a tank top or something like that And you don't always feel super comfy pulling them off. I mean, maybe that's just me But anyways, I am going to be knitting the match cardigan again And this time I am using premier yarns serenity chunky and this is a color taupe so just a simple light tan beigey color with really fun little nips in there. And I like the little like tweedy bits because they don't stick out super far, which is nice. Um, this yarn is just 100% acrylic, right? Right. It's 97% acrylic, 3% viscose, which I'm assuming the viscose is probably those tweedy bits. So I just cast this on last night. I was feeling the itch for a new project. So here we are. There's not a whole lot to show and it's kind of hard to show. I did add a couple of short rows to it and I did change the um, increases along the raglan because for some reason, every time I did those increases in the pattern, this time, I don't know if it's me or the yarn or the needles or what the heck, but they were looking real sloppy. Uh, they look beautiful on my first cardigan. So I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> I really like the increases on the match cardigan. It creates this really pretty like line and I love it, but they were looking so messy. And I think it's a matter of my tension and also the yarn. I think it's a combination of things, but they weren't looking right. And I was starting to get frustrated. So I was like, screw it. We're knitting front and back loop for these increases. And it's looking fine. It's not my favorite. I wish it was the one from the pattern, but again, I'm letting that go. I don't care that much. <laughs> I don't care that much. Do I like the way it looks in the pattern better? Yes, but it wasn't looking good as I knit it. So again, thinking it's a tension and yarn problem, but it's okay. These increases look good and the final product will look amazing. I'm undecided yet if I'm gonna add the pockets this time, uh, if I'm gonna knit it longer this time, or if I'm gonna keep everything the way I did it the last time, which is pretty much the pattern just minus 
the pockets. So we'll see how I'm feeling as I get into the project more. The last thing I've been working on that I'm undecided if I'm gonna keep working on them or if I'm going to just set them aside for now uh, is my second pair of Christmas socks. So I started knitting, hold on, it's just, it's a hot mess. I've got two socks going at once on different needles. So there's two balls of yarn, two sets of needles. It's just, it's messy. Ta-da! See what we got there in the end? It just took a minute. <laughs> so these are my second pair of Christmas socks. They have these fun mismatch uh, cuffs, which remind me of the Grinch. So we're affectionately calling these my Grinch socks. Uh, and then the bottom part has all of this amazing variegated yarn, which is from Full Moon Fibers. This is the mistletoe color. Here are the cakes. Sorry, so again, try to hold this still for you so you can actually see. Uh, yeah, this yarn is fabulous. For one, the Hank came it was actually 120 grams. I had to weigh it, you know, to evenly divide up my cakes. And I was like, hold on. I weighed the whole thing and was like, 120, holy cow, it's enormous. So I divided that up and I'm gonna be able to get nice long legs and a big foot for my big feet, uh, which is gonna be amazing. And I'm really looking forward to these. But yeah, the variegation on this yarn, because I mean, it's crazy variegated and speckly, is so fun. I usually knit stockinette, especially socks, without looking because I don't need to look. But I find myself wanting to look to see what colors are going where, and it's a lot of fun. Also, the randomness of it is amazing. I've had maybe one spot kind of pool yeah i think it's right here this is the only spot i can find any sort of thing it kind of spirals right here i mean and you can barely see it otherwise it's so incredibly random and i love it so very very much but i'm undecided if i'm going to put them on hold for uh the summer and knit on other somebody's slowing down in front of my house looking in love that if I want to knit on other fingering weight socks throughout the summer or if I want to just plug ahead on these. I'm thinking I might just plug ahead on these and get them done so that way by next Christmas I have another pair and then I can start on another another pair for Christmas in November and maybe even finish two pairs. So like have finish a pair in November and then finish a pair in December. That'd be cool because I have enough yarn for, I think, two more pairs of Christmas socks. So, yeah, thinking I'll keep working on these. Oh wait, I do have one more project to show you. The actual last project I'm working on is a pair of fingerless mittens. I got this yarn from my sock swap partner, which is absolutely stunning. So this is from High Country Wool, right? Pretty sure, High Country Fibers. Uh, it'll be down below. Uh, it is this fabulous non-super wash merino fingering weight wool. It's a two ply, or no, this one was DK. This wasn't fingering, I lie, it's DK. Uh, this is on their, it's their flock base. But I have started this mitten twice, three times, something like that. I was starting the watch mittens from Pearl Soho because I already had the pattern for the cap. It's a free pattern anyways, but I wasn't liking the way it was looking. It just looked kind of sloppy. So I, well, the first mitten I cast on was just, the gauge was just enormous. And I was like, yeah, that's not gonna work. I don't like that. So I recast on, then we were working on it and getting well into the increases. And I was like, I don't like the way this looks. It looks messy. So now I'm trying a new one. And I think I'm gonna rip back again, just a tiny bit, not a ton. I don't know if you can see right in there is my increases and it's looking a little messy. So I think I'm gonna rip back and fix that because I won't be happy with it if it stays. But this 
Yarn Knit Up is absolutely stunning. It is so freaking soft. And then at the cuff, I have some Full Moon Fibers. This is their 100% Highland Wool, which is absolutely gorgeous in this bright neon. So there'll be the neon at the cuff at the end, and then there'll be uh, neon at the top of the fingers, which is super fun. I did pull out my crochet blanket to show you because I have been putting a little bit of work onto it. It is a crochet waffle blanket. Pull the hook out of it so I don't lose the hook. So it is two times this width. And then this is how long we're getting. I have crocheted from here last time and it does take me a minute <laughs> for each row. But I haven't crocheted on it too, too much this last year. I ordered a new hook because the one I'm using is just one of these cheap plastic ones. And the plastic hook against the acrylic yarn is making this awful little squeaky sound. A normal person probably wouldn't be able to hear the squeaky sound, but I can hear the squeaky sound and it's driving me freaking crazy. I don't mind that this is an acrylic blanket. It's just gonna be for like the couch or the end of my bed or something like that. So, and it was free yarn. So I'm not like overly bothered by that, but the squeaking while I'm crocheting on it, plus that hook is not the most ergonomic. So I ordered an ergonomic metal hook. So it's got the metal tip with like the rubber bottom part. I'm gonna try that. I am aware that my gauge may change. I hear you, but I'm not overly worried about it. It's a blanket that's going to just be tossed like that one over there onto a couch or again, onto the end of my bed, something like that. It's not, I'm not worried about it. I think that's it. That was a lot. I feel like that was a lot. I also feel overly chatty. It's fine. Okay, uh, the only new yarn I have to show you was the yarn that I used as the match cardigan. That was new yarn that I, th I think that was a Black Friday purchase that just took a while to get here. So there was that yarn. And then I got this yarn. This is also from Premier. This is, what is this? Wool Select. Um, so this is kind of along the lines of the Lion Brand Wool Ease. This blend is 75, right? Yeah, 75% wool, 20, no, hello. 75% acrylic, 25% wool. So it's kind of like the wool ease in that it's mostly acrylic, but it has some wool in there. Uh, but, but this yarn is DK weight and it has more colors. So I'm curious to try this yarn and see how it goes. I will say it's not, it's not itchy. It's not buttery soft. It's just kind of there. <laughs> I don't know how to, it's just, it's, it's yarn. I don't know how to describe this. So yeah, I am curious to see if how it softens up after washing because even the Lion brand is not like soft until it's washed and then it's nice and nice and soft. So I'm curious to see how this works up. I have a couple of ideas in mind for this yarn. One of them kind of being like something textured and fun. I don't know. There is a pattern by Sari Norland that I cannot think of the name, but it's really pretty. I'll put it on screen here. Oh, it's so pretty. And I'm thinking this could be really nice for that. I'm pretty sure it's a DK weight pattern. I'm excited to try this. I don't have plans to immediately cast this on. My plan is to first finish my match cardigan. And then when I'm done with that, I want to cast on my brown cardigan. And then when I'm done with that, I don't know. I wanna start working on some pullovers, some ones like this that are just basic because I find these are the ones that I go to the most. And most of my sweaters aren't like this. They're V-necks or not basic. And my most worn sweaters are my basic raglans or drop shoulders that are regular necks, not high necks, not open necks, regular crew neck or slightly higher necked, but yeah. So yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. I do have a couple of yarn finished things to show you. So if you've been following me on Instagram and followed along with my Vlogmas, I started spinning and I don't have a spinning wheel. I am just using a drop spindle. 
So I have my first ever spin, which is this crazy wild 100% merino. Uh, this is Malabrigo that I picked up from La Mercerie when I did a pop up there. And it is super thick and thin, uh, but it is a lot of fun. And I ended up knitting a couple of Christmas ornaments out of this. I don't have them here to show you because, well, I put them away along with the Christmas decor. So again, here's a photo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they turned out really cute and ugly and fun. So yeah, I have those that I knit out of that that I forgot about. But I did finish another spin. Look at it. It is so fabulous. This is 100% Coriadale. I am using a Turkish drop spindle for my spin. And yeah, I am really happy with how this turned out. I have a plan for this, I think, but I'm not 100% sure. Yesterday, I played around with a different type of spinning, like having two different colors and kind of patching them together. I don't, I think it's called a combination spin or something like that. I don't know. I'm still learning here, people, but I just played around with the teeniest little bit because I was like, I don't want to like spin up a whole bunch and like be like, e. and trust me, I'm kind of going e at this. So it's fine. I'm playing. I'm playing around with it, but I'm having fun. So there are my spins. All right. I have one last thing to show you uh, as far as knitting organization goes. So I'm sure you all have seen the mood. I think it's how you pronounce it, the M-U-D-D uh, company and their beautiful needle organization. And then there's Maple and Thread. Also, I think that's the company name. Uh, they also have some beautiful needle organization things uh, that I would love to have, but they're just outside of my budget. So I was on the hunt for something that was a little bit more in my price range. So what I found were actually budget folders like they're budget friendly but they're for budgeting like planning out your costs of all the things throughout the month so i got this folder it's like an a6 size and inside it has these little like zip baggies that are designed to hold money and then it also came with stickers that like said rent and food all these different things on them, but of course I'm not using it to plan uh, out my budget. I am using it for a noodle organization. So uh, I, on the corner of all these little guys, put needle sizes and they perfectly fit my fixed knitting needles. So I have like this, uh, they fit not only my large chow goose, but they also fit like my small circulars and like look at that they fit in there perfectly and i can see inside of them and then again with the written thing on there they're all like in here organized and stuff the last one i did combine needles because i didn't have more than one so some of them like you know the smaller sizes i only have one needle in them but there's the potential there may end up being more in the future. Some of them do have quite a few in them, like my three millimeter. I have, I have four sets of three millimeter needles, two chow goo long red lace ones, a chow goo small red lace one, and then another random needle fixed small circumference one. So like some of these are a little bit more full than others, but it fits them gorgeously. It's a six ring binder. It has pockets in the sides, which I'm not currently using for anything though. Who knows? You probably could sit, stick like a needle measure thing, like your needle gauge thing into these pockets, uh, etc. And then this one has a really nice elastic band that then keeps it from, you know, pulling apart. So we really like that. Also, when I got this, I was thinking this would be really great to stick seasonal stitch markers into and other oddball stitch markers that I'm not using at that moment. Um, but then once I've got the needles in there, I realized, yeah, it's not going to fit stitch markers too because I didn't want to put them in there. And then like when I put the band around it, have 
them crush any of like the polymer clay ones because though polymer clay is pretty sturdy, when you smush it, chances are you could break something off. So my husband for Christmas got me another binder, though this one does have a metal, not a metal, a magnetic clasp which holds on okay but I can't fill it quite as full as the other one because this like tends to pop off. I have it just so at the moment to where it's not popping off but I have a few different things in here. I did have another one that I ended up not being able to put in here because it was making it too big. I had my needle stoppers in one of these little bags but it's fine. Uh, so what I did is I took some of these like plastic bags and I sewed a little like line in them to create like a divider. In this first set I have my autumn and Halloween markers and then I have my more summery markers. In this one I have my Christmas markers. This side will hold my winter ones, um, but I still have those out because it is January and it is still winter and I'm still using them. So next to the Christmas ones will go my winter ones. Over here, I just have some random polymer clay ones that I'm just not using at the moment. Same with over here, it's like a mix of polymer and my resin ones. So I will kind of rotate out my markers so they get like, it's like, ooh, new markers and but they're old markers. So I'm just kind of rotating them out right now. I have a little dish next to where I sit in our family room that has like markers I'm using at the moment. And it is so much more organized than it's ever been. And it's a lot cleaner. And then I don't have to worry about where did I put those other markers that I'm not using right now? Cause it's all in here. So yeah, I'm very happy with this uh, little organization system I have now. And then these just sit nicely on my shelf next to my uh, zipper pouch that holds my interchangeable knitting needle set. There are those, I'm really happy with it. I will put the link down below to the brown one that I'm using. I That one I think was like $9 and it came with the little zipper things. I did order an extra like pack of the zipper things which I didn't end up needing, but it's okay, maybe I'll use them in the future in another notebook. I couldn't find a notebook of this size that didn't come with all the inserts and stuff that had the elastic band. So I will look again to see if I can find another one because uh, I do have more things I could organize and put into these things. And I just like that having everything in one spot. It's just, it's so good. All right, so that is it for all of the knitting and crocheting content. Now I'm just gonna share a few little admin -y type things that um, I've been kind of bouncing around and then you can give me feedback on whatever you think down below. But. Going forward, I'm trying to focus in this channel a little bit more uh, to be curated content, a little bit more organized and more planned out things. Gonna try, we'll see if that happens or not. And one of the things I plan on eliminating are my lifestyle vlogs. Now, I don't plan on eliminating them entirely. I just plan on eliminating them to the public. I will still be doing lifestyle vlogs. I don't know if that's going to be monthly or quarterly or just whenever I feel like it. Don't know yet. I have yet to record anything for January and we're almost a weekend. So I'm not like stressing over it all, but my plan is to still create them, but keep them private. Now, I know there are a few of you like around three to 400 of you that watch my vlogs consistently and you have told me before that you really like them. So my plan is to keep them private, but I'm kind of bouncing around two different ideas. One of them being I have on my Instagram a, uh, what are they called? Hold on, give me a hot second. A broadcast channel. Uh, basically, if you go to my profile, there is a, a little spot there that says DNR news and hangout in there is where I can share like hey I've got like you know this upcoming restock or I share behind the scenes I don't share super often there just because I actually kind of forget about it but I was thinking 
if I put my videos private, if you're really interested in that content, if you go there, I will specifically share the links to that spot so you can watch those videos. I also toyed around the idea about starting a Patreon for those, but there's a couple of things about that that make me hesitate just a little bit. One of those being, I know a lot of people like can't afford to, you know, support every single maker. Like I have two people that I support on Patreon and there are plenty more that I'd like to. I just can't afford to support every single person that I like. So, and having like content stripped away and be like, oh, now you have to pay for it. Like I see the necessity of it, but for this type of content, it's not like I'm adding extra value or extra anything for it to make sense for you to pay for it type thing. You get what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> But I have toyed around with the idea of doing both. So if you can't or like afford to like support me on Patreon or like you just don't want to, which that's totally fine, uh, you could go to there and then still see my lifestyle vlogs or you could support me on Patreon and still get access to them and you just be like, give me a little extra. But the problem I have with that is just in case like I miss some like months or I don't have content that gives I get a little bit of stress about that too because like what if I don't have anything to give to my patreons like yeah so I don't really know let me know what you think down below I am definitely going to be making them private though for a couple of different reasons the first one being uh it's kind of stripping it's kind of messing with my algorithm because less people watch them which is understandable uh so then YouTube says mm, people aren't really interested in your content so they don't show it when I post other like knitting content that people actually would be interested in. So that's reason number one why I'm taking those from my YouTube and reason two is just because I'm showing more of my family and like my kids are growing up and I don't I mean I'm sharing it on the internet so it is technically like out there and in the public but I kind of want only the people who actually genuinely care like to see it. I don't just want like anybody and everybody to be able to see it. Only the people who are actually interested in me and my life to be able to see that content. So those are kind of the reasons the lifestyle vlogs will no longer be public here on this YouTube channel. Again, if you're interested, I will probably be doing that on my Instagram. So go definitely subscribe to that. I don't really know what you would say. Join that group. On Instagram I will definitely be sharing them there and then if I do a patreon I'll let you know but I don't really know at the moment let me know what you think anyways that was a lot of stuff uh, I'm now like hungry it is not lunchtime but I'm not hungry there's a lot of talking all right that is it for today thank you so much for watching and subscribing and liking and doing all those things drop a comment down below what you've been working on and if you have any questions for me etc you know you know how to do it anyways Thank you so much and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.